Welcome to the newest edition of Noon Dish. I'm your host, Tommy Ashley. That's Don Callahan. We are sponsored by Johnny T-Shirt and Congruity. CongruityHR.com front slash Tar Heels for all your small to mid-size business needs. And, of course, everybody knows who Johnny T-Shirt is. Visit him on Franklin Street or online. Don Callahan. It's been two weeks already. One thing is sure, Don. Yes. When my, when my, when my weeks are bad and I'm having a rough time, you sort of brighten my day. I, I can't figure out why, and it's not normal, but you do. It's good uh, to talk to you again. This is getting uncomfortable now, <laughs> um, because you might be the only one who's ever told me that. Uh, you know, when yeah, I go weird. when I go downstairs and I have to talk to my daughter, I immediately get the eye rolls, get something similar from my wife. So, so yeah, so it's uh, it's great to hear that I can be your sunshine. Well, I uh, I saw a. I think it was an Instagram reel or something, and it talks about dads. And mm-hmm. It was like the ages. Like at age one, your dad's the greatest thing ever. He's just like a blur in your eye. And like at age 18, your dad doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. But as they get older, it says maybe my dad did know what he was talking about. So I asked my boys the other day, where mm-hmm. am I on this scale? And my freshman at Carolina actually said, I'm kind of at age 45, which is – Maybe my dad does know what he's talking about. <laughs> so I was impressed. Raise them right. So if That's they're good. rolling their eyes to you and you're paying their for their food and their rent and yeah. all, you, you got to handle that. Yeah, absolutely. Chat MVP last Chat week. Chat MVP, Gary Lewis from last week. I can't remember, or two weeks ago. So this, uh, this podcast is dedicated to, to Gary. If you are in here, we don't have any, any comments yet. Are we live? Yeah. yeah, we're live. We're live. Um, I don't know. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this podcast is dedicated to Gary Lewis for his contributions two weeks ago to our pre Easter podcast. And, um, and yeah, what else we have? Oh, special guest, special guest coming up shortly. I'll let you handle that. Cause it's an okay. important one. And, and somebody we want the- to at least present, you know, Alex White. Director of, of football recruiting. Okay, so we do have someone in here. Yeah, Cameron he's, Holtz, number one. You get Chad MVP, Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> Let me uh, bring Alex in here so she can get in on this top five, and we'll talk about it. How you doing, Alex? Hey, Tommy, I'm good. How are you? I am well. Thank you for joining in, Don and us. So Don's, Don sent me a note and said, I'm going to read it word for word. Oh, boy. He said, unless you oppose... <laughs> I'll take charge on this interview, <laughs> and then you can jump in with follow-up questions. That works well. Don, it's all you, brother. Yeah, well, just in my defense, we've done that the last couple of times. This is a little behind the scenes. We've done this a couple of times because we don't want to trip over each other. But anyway, um, yes, yeah, so let me introduce Alex White. I believe your title is Director of Recruiting at North yes. Carolina. Yeah. So let me just ask you, when you go to a wedding or some sort of family function, you meet some family members they haven't seen in a long time. They come up to you and they say, Hey, I hear, I hear you work at North Carolina in the football department. What's kind of your, I guess, description for somebody who probably doesn't follow recruiting, may not even watch football for what you actually do at North Carolina? Yeah, that's a great question. It's really funny when sometimes people see my job title, they think I'm in HR and that I'm hiring new people for <laughs> the football you know, staff. Um, and so my kind of basic introduction is that anytime a recruit steps foot on campus, that's somehow in my wheelhouse. Now we have a big team um, of a recruiting staff, so that doesn't mean that I'm doing everything all the time, but that there is kind of in, in my department. And then I also handle a lot of our communications with our prospect and their families, a lot of event planning. I do a lot of that alongside um, Jess and Molly and some of the other uh, people we have in our department. But I basically say event planner, host for the high schoolers and transfer prospects that we're bringing on, on campus. All right. So I'm going right off the dome on your background. Okay. okay. So you're, so, so stop me whenever I get something wrong. Yep. No, so you're good. You're from the Outer Banks. From the Outer Banks. Yeah. Went, went to high school there. Yes. We're a student at North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um, while you were a student, became a student assistant for the football staff. And I believe you worked worked mostly underneath Gunnar Brewer. I did. I was a brew crew member. So worked on a brewer. (laughs) All right. So then you graduate from UNC. 
they did have a full they did not have a full time position at that time. You go to App State, work in their recruiting department for I guess a year, a little and bit then call it a year. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, a year, and then you went briefly to Virginia Tech. Yes. Similar sort of position, and then North Carolina came calling. How am I doing so far? Great, you're spot on. Okay, all right. Spot on. Um, Mac Brown in particular, or actually, I think it was Sally Brown. Okay, actually, yeah. Yes, who who uh, wanted you back, and you were initially an administrative assistant, but then once um, Angela Kirkpatrick left for Georgia, that opened up the spot that you're currently in. I know the titles are o- always different and everything. Yeah, and so maybe I was, replaced. Um, I don't know if you remember Kyra Kendrick. So Angela. Oh, left. yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah, so I replaced Kyra. Um, right kind of at the beginning um, when when COVID, COVID. shut down recruiting for about a year and a half. And so that year and a half was really when I was gone. So it's kind of funny. I think in the time that I graduated from Carolina to the time that I and, and left and went to App and went to Virginia Tech to the time I came back, was Coach Brown's assistant, got promoted to director of recruiting. I think I missed one recruiting event in a year and a half. Oh, wow. <laughs> so obviously, you know, a lot of like Zoom calls went on in that year. We're doing a lot of things virtually, but as far as events on campus, I really only missed one event, um, and that's when I was at App State. So let me follow up on the App State. So the only time I've ever been to App State is when Carolina played up there a couple of years ago, 63, yeah. 61. Insane environment up there. What it was? What was it like just day-to-day in the short time you were up there? Because oh, on football gosh. Saturdays, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I love Boone. I'm the first to, to brag about Boone to anyone. Um, it's kind of, you know, funny. I'm from the Outer Banks, so obviously a similar tourist town. So instead of contrasting mountains to beach, I really tried to compare the two because it was, you know, very small, quaint tourist town, obviously with much bigger college, which made working in football so fun there. Um, but I loved my time in Boone. Um, the weather was beautiful. Um, well, I say that I moved there in February and I called my mom. They were, um, I think, at the beach, and I was like, Mom, I live in Narnia. It's snowing <laughs> all the time. The snow is coming at me sideways. Like, this is crazy. Um, but the people there are incredible. I love their football staff. They've got great restaurants. There's a lot of little other cute towns around Boone. Blown Rock um, is one of my favorites. Um, so I, I loved my time up there. Um, and I, I think that they have a really great culture in, in their team. I loved their staff. I loved their players. I still keep in touch with a lot of those guys. So, And then going back there, that was a crazy game. Obviously, wish we could have Maybe went a little bit in better style. I, my heart was like beating out of my chest <laughs> watching that. Um, but no, I love it up there. I love the mountains. Absolutely insane on that Saturday up there. Wow. Gosh. Let, let me ask you this. You mentioned snow and we were getting into the weeds, but how many times did you see snow growing up in the Outer Banks? And we're exactly in the Outer Banks because yeah. so that's I'm a pretty me- cool area oh. too. Um, so I went to Manio Elementary, Middle High, um, right on the water. So, I mean, we got snow like – you know, maybe once or twice a year. And I say that and it would be like, you know, a quarter of an inch and we'd get out of school for three days. Um, But there was one really big snow that I remember. Our house is right on the water and the sound completely froze over. So there's actually a picture of my dad, like, oh, you know, however, you know, 50 yards on the sound that's just frozen over, like giving us a thumbs up. Um, And then it's, this is so beach of us too. There's not a lot of hills. And so my dad pulled us on like a, a water tube that you would pull behind a boat on a golf cart. And that was like a sledding at the beach. So <laughs> it is a different world out there, but it is certainly yeah. beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, Don. I know you want in. Why? Well, I'm going to stay in the weeds here. And this is actually a question <laughs> for both of you. Both of you guys. Have either one of you watched the TV show Outer Banks? Yes. Yes. Religiously, no, actually. Not. Really? Yeah. I felt like that was like a teeny bobber sort of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by that Tommy has watched it. How how realistic is it, Alex? Okay, so I've never seen it, so I don't I mean Yeah, I mean there's this like rival between friend groups, which isn't quite accurate. I feel like everyone down there kind of got along, but um there is this culture of like you don't wear shoes to like do things and everyone just hops on the boat and goes to hang out. So that aspect of it of like everyone being outside all the time is super accurate. Um I remember like even now, if I'm home for a little bit or back in high school, you just see people like passing on boats and you just wave to them and you're like, oh, that's so-and-so. And so it, that's totally, totally accurate. And then, you know, they filmed it in Charleston 
but mm-hmm. they still, at least for, you know, where I am on the Outer Banks, I think they did a good job of like showing the marsh and it's not just totally on the ocean. They still have that like sound mm-hmm. um, kind of view, which is for me, like totally accurate. The one Don, thing I'm, I remember Don, I thought you, to bring up. Don, you, you need to get with the program, man. You can either grow old and get old or you can grow old but not up that, that i choose not, to do the not up part yeah i i have learned not to watch tv shows that my kids talk about a lot but the one thing <laughs> that my daughter mentioned that bothered her a lot was i guess during one episode they came on i guess the quote-unquote mainland and it made it seem like chapel hill was literally the first town you hit they took a of- ferry from <laughs> Manio to chapel hill which like yeah it's, it's just not is that possible, possible? Yeah. but i'm like if that had been a thing that would have been great for me in college oh yeah <laughs> you know it's like a three and a half hour drive you could have lived at home during college i know i know <laughs> like, taking the ferry but so no there were little things like that where i'm like okay this is tv whatever we'll go with it but <laughs> i got me like outer banks got a shout out chapel hill got a shout out and so i was like you know what don't Perfect. don't stress over the details <laughs> yeah so going back to when you're in high school and i can yeah. remember the position that you have, and again, the, the titles change a bunch. Yeah. But the first person I can remember having it was Andy Hansen, who's now at Southern Cal, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so the position basically didn't exist. I don't know. I don't know how long ago that was, 10, 15 years ago or whatever. So when you're in high school, I mean, you're, you're basically, you're, you have a job that didn't exist. So, I mean, what was your aspirations yeah. for beyond school? You know, that's, that's such a good question. Um, I always, since I was very, very young, had this huge passion for football. Um, and so I always thought that it's something that, you know, I, I might could work in. But I think for me, kind of like you said, you didn't see like this role before. So that was either like Aaron Andrews or be like an athletic trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of went into college thinking that um, I was an exercise sports science major and then um, also spent some time in the journalism school. So those were kind of my two you know, career options, which are obviously so different, athletic trainer and journalist. I mean, come on. The one thing it has in common is, you know, the athletic piece to it. Um, So I really, you know, wasn't sure what I wanted to do. It's actually kind of funny and in full circle. I knew that there was a place like in recruiting for for women and especially students at Carolina. My mom, both my parents went to Carolina, but my mom specifically worked in the football office when she was a student and worked in recruiting. Um, and so I, she had told me like, I bet that there's still something around, da, 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 da. You should, you know, find out more about it. And then I actually got connected with Chris Kapilovic, who was the offensive line coach at the time, who's now down in Alabama. Um, I got connected with him, I guess, going into my senior year of high school. And he had kind of walked us through, they had, they had just hired Annie, um, and told me about their recruiting department. And I was like, I'm in, I got to get into school first, but what I do, I'm all yours. And so, um, got into Carolina and then I think I had my dad like email Coach Capper. I can't remember how that interaction went and was like, she's ready to go. And so I um, graduated high school. And then I literally think a couple days later, I came up to work Fedora's Freak Show um, and worked some football camps, you know, just a couple days after I graduated high school. So wow. I'm all in from like the very beginning. So let me ask you a follow up on that. If you were talking to a younger you or somebody in your position, um, maybe with your aspirations growing up in high school and even current students at Carolina, what would you tell them, number one, how to get into it? Number two, what do you need to be successful in it? Yeah, so I think how to get into it, you know, is just reaching out and talking to people. Every every school would have some sort of like student recruiting program. So like reaching out and not reaching out like your senior year of college, you know, you need to be reaching out like, right away when you have this kind of desire to do this. Um, And then something that a piece of advice that somebody told me that I tell all my students is to treat every interaction like an interview. Um, So that way, every coach that you have an interaction with, they're going to walk away with positive things to say and that she works hard. Um, And so just going in every day with a positive attitude. And, you know, I look back on my my college career and, you know, my early 20s, and I really feel like every decision I made um, big or small was to put me in this position that I'm in now. So do I go to dinner with my friends or do I go to dinner with the recruit and the coach and host this prospect? Do I, um, study abroad for the summer or do I stick around to, um, do I stick around to help with camp and official visits? So every decision I made since I was about 18 somehow, um, was to put me in the position that I'm in now with this job. And so I think that like that, dedication to a goal is something that's really important when you want to work in college football. 
Yeah, I love what you said there. Treat every interaction like a like an interview because you never know what the tipping point was for them to choose you. Right. To hire you and all. And I think that's what a lot of young people forget these days, especially in the social media world and all that, is you never know what's going to be that part that gets you over the hump and into it. And granted, once you're into it, you're, you've got that foot in. But like what you're talking about, there's so many, there's so much competition to do yeah. this. I mean, you work mm -hmm. as director of recruiting for the University of North Carolina, one of the biggest, most successful universities in the country. It's a big deal. And every step of the way, like you said, you sort of took that goal or that mindset that these are the small steps I've got to take to get here. And you never missed an opportunity and here you are. So I, th I think that's a great piece of advice for young people is that, yeah, like be a kid and, and be a young person and enjoy life, but don't miss the opportunities to put yourself forward in a great light. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and don't get on social media like Don does and just act <laughs> crazy sometimes. Don, yeah. spin this towards, uh, spin this towards the big picture with Carolina. Yeah. So the one thing I did want to get into a little bit more in detail is that, and I deal with this too because of you know how our jobs overlap, is that the year is almost broken up into like sub, I guess seasons. Yeah. You know, like little sub seasons. Yeah. Yes. You have the actual football season. You have. I guess the basketball season for visits, junior days, that sort of thing. You have the spring visit season, which obviously overlaps with um, uh, spring football. Um, it dies down a little bit in May. Um, and then obviously June is really big, especially now with official visits, all, almost all of them taking place in June. And then you also have camps in June. So what, I mean, what is kind of like, what is the differences for you on what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and how, I mean, how does it differ pretty vastly with, oh, within each season? A hundred percent. So it's funny. I think my like slowest time is the season um, mm -hmm. because game days are all structured the same. I have the same vendors. Um, I don't want to say that it's cookie cutter, but I have the same initial plan for every game day. And then depending on what prospects are coming, you know, you might ask a couple guys to get here a little earlier so they can meet with academics or see campus. So um, I think the season itself for me, <laughs> is, is, is probably my lightest, my lightest time. And then the minute season ends and you get into December and you've got transfer portal um, and you've got those official visits, that's totally different than planning for official visits in June. So like right now, you know, there's four weekends in June and we've already, you know, got a good list of who's coming what weekend. So I can go ahead and start planning and, um, you know, we don't have itineraries or any of that stuff yet, but I can go ahead and like format my spreadsheets and like make sure the pictures are all center. Whereas when you're planning for transfer portal, I don't know who's coming tomorrow. You know, I, I guess I'll find out when a coach calls me or, um, but so you kind of have to be like much more on the fly. Like, all right, this restaurant that we normally use is booked because of a Christmas party. Like let's figure out something different. Um, and Jess who kind of oversees a lot of that for official visits does a really good job with, with all that kind of stuff. Um, but so that's kind of official visit season. And then spring ball right now, it's just a lot of like one-off visits. And so having to be prepared like every single day. So, you know, last week um, was spring break for a lot of guys in North Carolina. And so I think we had people visit almost every day. Whereas this week and, you know, next week will be a little bit slower because those guys are back in school. Um, so, and it also depends on when, you know, when coaches are on the road. So it's just every season is so different. Um, but the nice thing is there's usually like a little bit of a breather before each one. And so like, we just talked about May is a little bit slower. Coaches are on the road. So that's kind of a breather to help you prepare for June. And then July and August can be a little bit of a breather before you prepare everything for the season. Um, and so it is nice we, to have a little bit of a break between kind of those bigger, you know, seasons. So I agree with you because a lot of people during the football season are like, oh, man, you're so I'm talking about myself and I know I yeah. shouldn't be. But they're like, oh, you're so busy. The football season. I'm like, no, it's actually pretty easy because visits only take place on Saturdays. You 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 know, nothing's going on really during the week. You're just catching up with kids. It's, it's so like cookie cutter, I think, is, is a good way to describe it because you know exactly what to expect each week. Whereas, I mean, the off season is just nuts on what's happening other than if it's a dead period. So what like during the dead period in February, and then also in August, most of July. And then even during times where the coach is on the road, like you mentioned in May, is it for you just preparing for 
Viz is coming up or are you doing any sort of stuff? I know that NCAA rules kind of dictate a lot of this, but are you doing any other stuff with recruits beyond actual preparation? Yeah, I mean, you'll still have some guys come in unless it's a dead period. Um, in May, we'll still have some guys come in. But um, like in February, we're just kind of recapping everything from crazy January and crazy December, kind of making sure our inventory is good. And then usually we'll have a big event in March, you know, right when March opens up. Um, so, you know, getting that ready to go. So I think it's a lot of like maybe playing a little bit of catch up on some of the things that weren't time sensitive that you were dealing with and then also trying to get really far ahead. Um, so I think that's that's pretty good. And then, you know, we get a good, you know, chunk of vacation in July before we come back and we'll have like one event in July. Forgot about vacation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> July is vacation. Um, and then August is really like preparing for the season. You mentioned transfer portal earlier. How much has that totally changed your job? Oh, gosh. Like, crazy. I mean, I'm sure, like, Daniel and, and those guys, Daniel and Julian and Pat, obviously they're dealing with the, the bigger, like, going through all the list of names and evaling them. So their job has changed a lot more. But for us, you know, we think of, like, traditional recruiting. You're recruiting high school kids for, like, two years, right? And so, you know, you put all that time in and you get to know mom and girlfriend and coach and whoever. And then transfer portal comes around and you recruit them for two days. Um, so it's just a totally different mindset. And then I also think, you know, a couple of years ago, December was when you had most of your high school official visits. Mm -hmm. Now that's kind of gone to June because they a lot of times want to make a decision before their senior season, which I think is awesome. Gives them time to slow down, think about things, you know, instead of trying to make a crazy big decision in the season. So that leaves really like December and January up for a lot of portal visits. Um, and the thing about portal is like, you have to be kind of totally on standby. Um, you, you don't know when guys are going to enter a guy might think that he's going to one school. And then all of a sudden that school took a different player at that position. So they're back on the market. Um, so I feel like it transfer portal changes, at least from a visit standpoint, like every single day. I mean, the on campus recruiting girls will like, we'll talk every morning. Okay. This is the plan. And by lunchtime, it might've changed like five times <laughs> and like, who's coming with who and a, a lot of guys that are um, coming in as transfers, um, they might only come in for like one night or something, whereas high schoolers usually come in for two or they might only come in with their dad or sometimes even by themselves, whereas high schoolers usually bring like a larger entourage with them. So, and, and we're talking with Alex White, director of recruiting for North Carolina football. If you have questions for her, drop them in the chat. I see Alan Minton's gotten one up there. We'll get it in for sure before we finish. But Alex, I wanted to ask you, you you talk about the visits for transfer portal guys, and most of those guys are going to be older. They're going to be, you know, some cases grad guys. So they're, I don't want to say grown, because not quite grown, but close, and, and certainly <laughs> different than 16, 17-year-olds. Yeah. What's the difference in the in how you guys set those up for the yeah. older, older guys? You know, a lot of times that's just like pure business. Like, you know, they'll get in, they want to see um, where their position coach or the coordinator on their side of the ball sees them on the field um, and really spend a lot of time talking about how we would use them in our offense or defense. So usually those meetings are a little bit longer. Um, they've already, you know, had a strength program in place. They've already had a nutrition program. So they're able to ask more detailed questions to our sports science staff, which is really great and really know, hey, like, this is what works best for me. How can you implement this? So I think that's a piece that really helps with us. And then one thing that we do too is, um, you know, show the guys some local apartments. Um, so that's something that, you know, they, if they're visiting us at the, you know, middle of December and then they're enrolling the beginning of January, like that might be the only time that they're coming up here before they have to make this move. They want to do Christmas with their family. They got to move out of their old place. They might be playing in a bowl game with their former team. Um, and so we want to make sure that, they have everything that they need to, to talk to, you know, make that decision. And then if they do make that decision, feel comfortable with like getting everything set up in Chapel Hill. So we'll have them meet with our um, director of football ops, Joe Hayden, one of our academic advisors, um, Les Myers, and then our director of player development, Brandon Kennedy. So the three of them will sit down with a transfer portal prospect and be like, okay, if you decide to come here, here's your checklist. Like, here's how you apply. This is the, they'll talk about like what program they should apply for. And it's different, whether it's an undergrad or a grad transfer. And then Brandon will really talk to them about housing and, you know, Hey, are a couple guys live in, in these apartments 
would happy to set you up with a leasing office. So we have like a 30 minute schedule every time a trades report or 30 minute meeting for all of our guys from the portal to come in. And we call it like a transition to Carolina meeting because they have about two weeks to pick up their life and move to Chapel Hill. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that they have all of those things kind of knocked off in their mind to feel comfortable when they actually start to move. That's the aspect of the whole transfer portal that's just so crazy is these kids, they're at one school, they're trying to finish up, tie up loose ends, take finals, do all this, and then they got to go to another school, move. It might be during the holidays. You barely get to see your family. It's just it's just kind of nuts. Um, before we get back, I want to announce Gary Lewis, our chat MVP, is in the MVP now. So, Gary, if you haven't heard, you're the chat MVP from last week. So congratulations. And then, Tommy, can you pull up that question from Alan? I'll ask it of... Uh, of Alex. So what's the most rewarding part of what you do? Oh, see, this is my favorite thing to answer. Um, so I'll just, I'll give a shout out to one of our freshmen right now, Jordan Ship. Um, we recruited him for a while. Um, he's a great player, great family. I just love We're him. big fans of Jordan here. Oh, I know he's the best. <laughs> um, but so having recruited him and, you know, be around him on visits and get to know his mom. And then, um, have them commit to Carolina, go through official visits, all that kind of stuff, and then have him on campus. And now he is sitting in on recruit meetings and he's telling recruits why he's so proud to be at Carolina and why he loves it here. And I think that just like full circle. And Jordan hasn't played one down of actual football yet. You know, I mean, gosh, he's, he's been here for three months. But that to me is just like the biggest aha moment. Like we found a guy who fits here. He loves it here. He's a great, he's going to be a great player for us. And he's helping bring in the next group of people. And so I think just continuing to build a locker room of guys who are like Jordan and the um, guys, you know, we've been recruiting is just the best part. The, one of the rules the NCAA actually passed that directly impacts you is the no more uh, photo, photo shoot for at least unofficial. They could do it for official visits, yes. right? Okay. No officials. Yes. But no more for unofficials. Yes. And it was funny because the the response on the message boards was like, oh, this is so stupid. Why don't they let them? And then I had to jump in and explain, you guys don't realize how much of a no. waste of time. So right. please, can you just, from your perspective, um, what's this rule? What's your take on, the, on this rule? Yeah. So two things. One, people that are serious about Carolina are still able to do photo shoots because we'll, they'll have that opportunity on their official visit. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say like, oh, seeing themselves in uniform, that's such a great opportunity. They still get to have that, right? So we're not taking away that experience. We're just saying, you know what? Like, this is a really special thing. We just want it for people who are really serious about coming here. Mm -hmm. And then on my end, <laughs> as um, planning it and, and Molly and Jess is in, um, you know, we would have a group of 20 or 20 people come through and they might be freshmen in high school. They Some of them might have little brothers who are seventh and eighth graders, and they would have this expectation that they can get a photo shoot. And they might have someone in their group that's got a couple offers, but the expectation for 20 is that everyone gets a photo shoot. And it really just kind of, I think, watered out, which would be a really, really special thing for these guys. Um, and I think it just kind of rehomes the focus in on playing football and getting a degree. And, and takes the the all the the flash away. And again, we'll we'll keep that. We'll have fun on your official visit. We'll we'll take all the pictures that you want. But when you're you're beginning that recruiting process, it's not about what you look in a uniform. It's about where you fit, um, where your family fits. And I think that we've just kind of refocused ourselves to that. Going off that, can you tell, or have you gotten where you can tell, like this guy's serious, this guy's not. These people are just here for the goodies or, or whatever. Can you tell that in the process? Yeah, you know, I think our staff does a really good job of, of limiting that before they even come to campus. So when guys come to campus, we know that they're they're really serious about us. But of course, there are some people here that when they come visit, you can tell that they're not paying attention to you and, um, you know, seem kind of somewhere else. And if they're like that, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll make note of that and maybe move to the next person on our list, too. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's easy to read people. But again, I think we do a really great job of making sure guys that do come on campus are serious about Carolina and could see themselves here. And if this isn't the place that they end up like, that's fine. We got it. But you know, at least they tried it out and we tried it out. All right. Yeah. I mean, people always say, Oh, they just want to come for a Duke ticket or, or things like that. And, and you explaining that sort of, you guys know the game as well. And, and yeah. you know, it, it, how to, you know, sort of weed through that kind of stuff. In doing this, what's been the craziest craziest experience 
that you've had maybe from an official visit what's something that's gone totally wrong you don't have to call out names or okay. anything like that but well, I, have to, I mean i've got some that i'll tell you when i don't have this job anymore <laughs> um, <laughs> but i think um oh gosh okay well one that just happened recently you know duke game this year i don't think anyone was expecting a field storm after duke and so you know we have the same like exit strategy every game and all of a sudden there's like fifty thousand people in the field and I'm getting tackled and I'm like, okay, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to think on the fly here. So anyway, I like pull all my people and I'm like, you stand here, you stand here and get it done. And it just so happened that, I guess there's a camera that like kind of overlooks the tunnel going out to the stadium. And um, I was like trying to keep like students out of here and I might've gotten like a little ugly with some of them, but um, <laughs> John Petruchis, our former um, D-line coach here under the Fedora staff, he's out Florida State now. He texted me and he was like, I see you, Alex. Like, you yell at those students. And I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, there's these videos of me, like, like <laughs> being so rude to a student on ESPN. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. I just I just was trying to, like, preserve our locker room. Um, so that's probably the most recent one that comes to mind. Um, but then like, as far as official visits, I mean, you'll always have like a flight go wrong where you have to play like mayday, mayday, mayday. He can't get in until tomorrow now. And, um, we had a mom get lost at RDU one time until like really late. And I'm just really not sure how that happens. Cause RDU yeah. very it's not a very big airport. Right. So then we were like waiting there for hours and her, her phone was dead. So like we just it, we were like sending out people all through baggage claim. We obviously can't get through the actual terminals. Yeah. And she ended up like buying a phone charger because her phone died and just sat in the terminals and took a nap. Um, so we were <laughs> that was one that will always <laughs> stick out to me. That is uh, it, it's crazy, though. I mean, it. everybody stresses so much about everything being perfect it's never totally perfect but oh, no. but do you sort of sit back when you have these big official visits weekends and all that do you sort of sit back and you and your team afterwards and say whew that was a good one you know? <laughs> yeah yeah most of the time we say that was a good one <laughs> um 100 percent. well um usually on sundays coach brown has finished his meeting and it'll be like there'll be some of us kind of outside of his lobby area just kind of waving off the last one and we'll all kind of sit there and be like, is everyone good? Did anything happen that no one else knows about that was like a crazy tornado? And most of the time, like we're good. <laughs> um, but again, obviously there's always like something that you can't control. And I think that's probably the hardest thing about this job is that relying on so many things that you can't control. I can't control the weather. I can't control if flights get delayed. I can't control if we win a ball game. Um, I can't control that, you know, went into overtime and, recruits have been standing for a lot longer than we anticipated. So I think that's just kind of one of the things that you're having to learn or that I've had to learn in this role is like, just when things, when life throws you, you know, a curveball or you're just not expecting it, like you need to be able to think on your feet and just figure it out and like look calm and happy while doing it. So uh, Preston has a question. Tommy, can you pull that up and I'll read uh, it as you pull it up. Uh, yeah. There you go. Does the Jordan brand seem to bring UNC any advantage? Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, saying that, you know, we're a Jordan school, when guys walk in and see like that jump man on our uniforms or they see the player exclusives that we get, their eyes are like, oh, like it's just a really awesome feeling. And then, um, you know, I think, you know, most, you know, high school or football prospects, they're, they're big shoe guys. Some of them might not be, but a lot of them are. And so it's just really, really cool for us to be able to show them that. And we also talk about, you know, how often they're able to get them and um, they just get so excited. So 100%, it's a huge selling point for us. Don's a shoe guy. What you I, got, some some mules and some uh, sandals, <laughs> Birkenstocks? Yeah. yeah, I'm not much of a shoe guy. I, I just, I, my um, my wife has to force me to, uh, to purchase shoes uh, every so often. My current walking shoes literally have holes in them. But oh, no. they're actually... They're actually comfortable, so I don't want to get a new pair. Oh, so, um, yeah. So, but those aren't the shoes I wear all the time. So, the last, the last question I really had for Alex was just, what I guess time frame we talked about seasons. What's kind of the most demanding you would say for you? June is very demanding. Okay. 
Um, and then now December has been very demanding. Yeah. Um, because you've got full practice. Coaches are going on the road. They're doing in-home visits. They're also scouting out the transfer portal. And this is kind of a reason why Daniel, our director of player personnel, his job is so crazy and, and Pat and Julian, their jobs are so crazy in December is because they're, you know, having to do the evaluation. They're planning the winter contact. Um, but on, therefore on our end, you know, our coaches are going all over the place. So if we have a recruit on campus, we have to be very strategic about their itinerary and making sure that, you know, Coach Brown's only here for 45 minutes. Like we got to make sure that that's when he, the, our guy on campus can meet with Coach Brown. But um, I think, I honestly think June, um, but, you know, I say that last last June was actually really smooth. Um, Jess, Molly, and I, the, the three of us and on campus have a really great system of working together. Um, and that was our second June of all being together. So first June, you know, you're still like, okay, what are your strengths? What are my strengths? Let's figure out how we can do this. Um, and then second year was really, really great. Um, we all, each of us knew exactly what we were supposed to be doing. We worked really, really well together. Um, they're two of my best friends. So that was really great. And then going into this June, Jess has already booked all the hotels. She's booked all the vendors. Um, so now I'm kind of like the itinerary person, just kind of making everything fit together. And so once we start doing that, that'll be my job. And then Molly is a great host. Um, and then sh so she'll have like a recruit for the weekend. And then she'll also do a lot of the stuff on the front end helping us as well. Um, so I say June, but again, I think with the team that we have, June has become much easier. I do agree just from an outsider looking in, although I pay attention probably more than most people do, is I feel like you guys have done a really good job balancing June. Because I think in the beginning, you would have so many camps and then official visits on top of that. But it seems like you guys have done a really good job of planning those camps, you know, and not necessarily over the weekends, although I think you have a couple, but yeah, they're mostly on Sundays. Alex Mars and mm -hmm. Pat. Um, yeah. So Mars is our um, director of high school relations and overseas camps. And then, you know, Pat's our general manager. So he oversees everything. And yeah. so last year, the two of them were like, okay, let's make this more. Efficient. Yeah. I'm like, thank you. Well, thank you so much. Cause um, I think last year, last June, what the, the last weekend of June was the big official visit weekend. And then also you had the showtime camp that Sunday. Yes. And I felt for you guys. I mean, I was yeah. worn out, but I, I mean, I didn't have the whole weekend to deal with stuff like you guys did. And I'm like, I just can't believe you guys are, you know, doing all this. So it was, um, that was a long weekend and it was a rewarding weekend. <laughs> um, but I mean, at the end of the day, like there's an end goal in sight. Yeah. And so, but when the last kid left for showtime, I literally like shed tears. Like, <laughs> it's like thank you. <laughs> like it's, Everyone got here successfully. We had a great camp. Everyone left. Everyone ate. We're all good. And then I realized that, like, we were done for June and had a couple weeks off in July. And I literally just, like, cried happy tears because I just felt so accomplished. And I thought we, again, I thought we had a really successful June. And having that big of, of a day on that last Sunday is always a little nerve-wracking because I'm like, what did I forget? What did I not think about? But we've got a great group of students and great group of um, recruiting volunteers. And so it was just, like, the perfect little icing on the cake, you know, cherry on top of the end. So for a couple of questions for me, and we'll let you get out of here. You've been so gracious with your time. Oh, yeah. How many, obviously it's what, 56 official visits each school can have. Kids have unlimited officials now. How many visits total, though, unofficial show-ups, uh, official and all, how many do y'all deal with a year, you think, oh, if you had to ballpark uh, it? Okay, let me do the math. So every game day we'll have – maybe a little bit less than 100. I think 90 is probably our average for game days. Um, and again, can, that can totally fluctuate depending on the game. But about 90. And then, um, you know, our larger recruiting events where we take them to basketball games and, and that kind of stuff might be about 20. Um, so you probably have three of those. Um, and then you, we usually don't hit 56 official visits. We're, we're usually smaller than that. But, I mean, we have – we welcome – at least a thousand more than that kids Ooh. on campus every year. So that's everyone gets a credential. They all have to fill out forms. Um, so our students do an incredible job <laughs> and all that. Um, but I mean, it's, it's a lot. And then, you know, they all have guests, they all have family. So for game days, you know, the NCAA lets us give three tickets out to a prospect, one for the prospect and then two for their guests. Um, so that's two more credentials that, you know, we need to make. And so, it's, it's a lot more than just the recruits. It's, you know, 
you know, they've got coaches and friends and teammates that want to come too. Yeah, it's kind of insane when you think about it, the number of folks y'all deal with. Sean Crawley is a regular in our chat, and he uh, he's asked a question, and it's, it's one I had an interest in. It's kind of what I was talking about earlier, um, kids not paying attention. Have you ever had a recruit, uh, sort of nutshell it, not behave very well? Yeah. I, I know that I've seen <laughs> – I've heard coaches talk about, not necessarily at Carolina, but talk about how they noticed how recruits spoke to his mother or to a parent or to a staffer or whatever. Have mm-hmm. you ever had those type situations? Again, yeah. no names. Nope, and, no names. And um, you sort of report to the coaches, say, hey, this guy might not be it. Yeah, so two, two right off the bat. Um, we had, this was a couple of years ago, we were bringing in someone for an official visit, and his mom was incredibly ugly to Jess and I. Um, was just Ooh. so, so rude to us. And we were like, we're just like, we're just trying to help. Um, yeah. And so we we initially took it to the offensive line coach at the time, and then he took it to Coach Brown. And Coach Brown is like, nope, if they're going to act like that's you, that is not, that's not a fit for us at Carolina. Um, so that was kind of story number one. And then I'll never forget this. Right when Coach Brown first got here, I was still a student at the time. I was a senior. And we were, it was a, somebody, it was like a, t- a top, DB on our board or whatever. And um, I was hosting him and all day long, he was just rude. not the right word, but just like very unattentive, just really kind of kept to himself. Maybe like nose was up a little bit. And um, I, you know, I'm a senior, like, I'm like, I'm going to keep that to myself. You know, I don't, it doesn't matter if he's, a, if he's the best one, like, let's go get him. Um, and Coach Brown meetings, they usually last 30, 45 minutes, sometimes longer, depending on the family. And I remember I, like, sat down outside, um, and this guy walked into Coach Brown's office and thinking I had, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Five minutes later, Coach brings him out and he's like, thank you so much, guys, for visiting. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I asked Coach later, and he was like, he's not coming here. I didn't want to waste our time. So um, I think I think it really goes back to Coach Brown. Like, he will not let – a family come here if they're not a fit for our team and, and a fit for Carolina. So hundred percent has happened before. <laughs> um, and they just find a different home to go to. <laughs> that, that's good that you brought those up because I think a lot of fans, they just view these recruits as kind of a name, you know, a, an ability that's going to be added to the football team. But in reality, if they don't have the other stuff outside of that ability, then they're, they're probably not going to be there, you know, yeah. very long, you know, or they could cause some other sort of problems in the locker room. And so there's a lot more that goes into it because there's, there's times where I get information and I'm like, all right, UNC is no longer recruiting this kid. And I report that and fans are like, what do you mean? He's a four star. And I'm like, there's other things involved with this. Yeah. He might be you know, maybe- star, like a one nine GPA. Yes. Like- yeah. Okay. We, yeah. I don't know what you want us to do about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's great that you kind of bring up those, um, those stories, but before we let you go, do you have, um, some, some baby names? Can you give us five baby names? Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, I told you I was going to think about this. It's a funny <laughs> story for all of our listeners. So, um, my family, we're very cultish Carolina people, but my parents went to Carolina my sister's a senior at Carolina. She's about to graduate. So our, our dogs have been named after athletic facilities at Carolina. So we've had a, a Finley for the golf course. We currently have a Keenan. And my mom sent us a picture of a puppy last night and said, he's going to be ours May 30th. What do we want to name him? And we came up with Dean. So sticking with the Carolina name. Um, but okay. Um, William is a family name that runs in mine. Okay. So And that's also Coach Brown's first name. So William, I like that. Um, Alex Brownie points is a boy's name. So Alex would you go, boy. would you go Alex for a boy or you just uh, like that name for a boy? I like it. I'm actually named after a man. I'm okay. named after, yeah. So I'm named after an Alexander. It's a great name. Are you just Alex or is it short for a so longer? I'm actually Jennifer Alexandra. Really? So yes. Okay. That Jennifer. was a good, that was a, if Why we'd had a girl. By- if why we would have had a girl, I would have pushed for Alexandra. But yeah, why do you go by your middle name then? Um, Just how it was. My parents always knew that they wanted to to call me Alex, um, but there was someone in their life very special. It's kind of a long story about how they met, named Jennifer, and they wanted to honor her. Um, and they thought that Jennifer Alexandra flowed better than Alexandra Jennifer. 
Um, but it's so funny now, like if I send an email to someone or I'm, hey, I'm Alex with Carolina Football, they 100% of the time think I'm a guy. <laughs> so everyone's like, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And I'm like, of course, being an Alex in football, like, you know, it's just kind of, no one would do that to a Jenny or a Jennifer or say, yes, sir. Yeah. But, you know. Well, it doesn't yeah, help that there's an Alex Mars also on staff. Well, it's funny. There's an Alex Mars on staff. Um, we call him Mars. But a lot of times I will get emails met for Alex White, the baseball player. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Or vice versa. So that's kind of funny, too. That's okay. hilarious. All right. You got three more for Donna. Okay. You got William and Alex. Okay. William and Alex. Um, my dad's name's Brian. So I'll throw okay. Brian in there. Um, Robert is my grandfather's name. Robert's a good name. And then my fiance's name is Jack. So I'll, I'll throw those in there. Okay. There you go, Don. Make yeah. a note of them. I'll make a note. Do you Don, has hang- agree- Don has agreed to uh, name his child after the number one vote getter. <laughs> <laughs> I so wish. Child, my my, my wife would not allow that. <laughs> Who was that, Alex? He said whoever wins like the chat member of the week. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Don's child named after him. <laughs> do you uh, do you want to hang out for these when we read these, Alex? Or do you have yeah. to go? Yeah. Okay. No, I'll hear. Go ahead, Tom. You want to read these, and then we'll get to ours? All right. Let's see. Alan Minton, Jackson, Bryce, Alex, Colby, <laughs> and Banks. Oh, I like Banks. That is a, that's one of those you'll have two last names. I've always had two first names in Thomas and Ashley. Uh, let's see, Don. We don't have a ton, but Steve Blakely, John, Mark, Don, Don. Casey, and Math. <laughs> Maybe you met Matt. Maybe you met Matt. Preston, Preston up there. Did I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Elvis, Bartholomew, Javier, Preston, and, of course, Ross. Your, your parent, your child's godparent, Ross. Ross a good one. So, Preston Ross. likes Ross. Alex might not be a regular listener, so she doesn't <laughs> understand, but Preston is a – he likes Ross jokes. He has some really good <laughs> Ross jokes. I'm sure there are many of them. <laughs> yes. I have no comment. Sean Crowley, Sean, Jack, Scott, John, and Patrick. Don, what's your top five? I don't see any. All right, so let me. I actually texted my wife. Um, We haven't. (laughs) We kind of have a working name, but we don't have an actual name. But here's her top five. Number one, she loves, which we're not going with, is Preston, Tristan, Kyler, Kobe, and Cooper. Those are her top five. So, um, Cooper the, Callahan, that'll be pretty cool. We're leaning towards one of them. It's not Preston. I don't Cooper, I just, Cooper Callahan sounds like a baseball name. Yeah, exactly. You know, so here are my top five. You ready, Tommy? Yeah. Napoleon, <sighs> Dash, Trip. Dad? Wait a minute. You say Dash as in D A S H? Yes. Trip, Scout, and well, so I have a couple funny ones. Um, there were, do you remember the, the Boston College linebacker actually just entered the transfer portal last time? I don't know how it's actually pronounced, but it looks like. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say it just in case I don't want to get us in trouble. Um, and then Jordan. See, Jordan was a potential puppy name for us. Yeah. So you and you don't I mean, obviously, Michael Jordan, but. You don't have to necessarily, that doesn't have to be like the origin of it. Right. So, but um, those are my names. I have some funny ones. I, I'll leave those, those don't, off now. Don't, don't get us canceled out of here. I yeah. will say that my youngest son is Dasher. His middle name is Dasher, oh. and it's a family name. Um, I can't keep up with it. I come from an old family. So you got, I think it's like his great, great, great uncle was james dasher so we followed that so i kind of like the dash name even though most people think it's what's the uh the incredibles and the kid on the incredibles dash. Name dash yeah so i've got elijah callahan <laughs> <laughs> uh we'll go uh noah callahan we'll go i had them on my list here hold on i don't want to give away that one you got to go Thomas, since if you're going to consider Ross, you got to okay. consider me. So, I'm not considering Ross, but go ahead. Tommy <laughs> Callahan, it seems like he needs to be in the mafia somewhere. And then uh, I had Asher. And I think, okay. I think uh, what's his name is um, 
Adam Lucas's boy is named Asher. I could be wrong. But anyway, yeah. Asher Callahan. I think that's his name. Yeah. So there you go. You got a lot to choose from. Okay. Appreciate and, uh, it. And my dog, who is on his last few legs, Alex, you're talking about names. His name is Ram. Aww, and he's a big black lab. Yeah. So you got a lot of Carolina in that. But Don, anything left here? This has been fun. This has been yeah. a lot more fun than just talking to you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate Alex coming on. I know, I mean, this is, I, I, well, I guess this week is a little bit easier for you because this high schools are on spring break, but still a very busy time for you. So I appreciate you taking in almost yeah. a, basically an hour to Thanks hang out with us. Me. So thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, Thanks, it's been guys. cool. Appreciate it and appreciate you taking the time to do to join us because we, we like to talk about North Carolina recruiting, but I feel like sometimes, and Don mentioned it earlier, these guys are more than just a name. And mm -hmm. um, it's not just like a video game where you just recruit a name and some numbers. It's the person and all. So it's pretty, pretty cool how you sort of highlighted not just the Carolina family side of it, but their family and their circle and all and how it's changed. You know, it, it's an interesting dynamic, especially with the portal and all that these days. Right. For sure. It's also interesting just how, you know, I'm old. When I started, these positions, I mean, Pat's position didn't exist. When I started, there was a recruiting coordinator, and he actually was a recruiting coordinator. Not now. I know that title's still thrown around, but they actually coordinated the recruiting. And then, you know, you, they just, you know, through the years, just added all these different positions to where – you, these staffs are massive, not just forgetting about the coaches, talk about the support staffs that, you know, Alex is part of are massive. And the fact that they got to work together so well um, is, is kind of, it's always kind of neat to observe and neat to talk about. So I, yeah. I really appreciate Alex, you, you um, shedding some light on this and the inside on this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for having me. I appreciate it. All yeah. Right. Shout out to Don Callahan. Shout out to Alex White. Shout out to Johnny T-Shirt and Congruity, our sponsors. Take care of them. They take care of us. We'll be back on the noon dish, I guess, in a couple of weeks. We'll have to come up with a, a new top five. Maybe a top five things Don does at night when he's feeding a baby yeah. in the middle of the night. Okay. But anyway, we'll have fun with it. All Thanks, right. everybody. We'll, right, thank we'll, talk, we'll talk soon.